Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Elden Ring PvP and another weapon showcase. Today we are taking a look at the Ice Rind Hatchet. This is a weapon that was common in speedruns for a while and even past the nerf that it received. It is still a very good weapon and one that I thoroughly enjoy. This weapon you can find at the Temple Quarter. It's southeast of the Site of Grace that's there in a chest that's inside of a bell tower. I'll have an image on the screen showing the location. This weapon is pretty good. I thoroughly enjoy using it, and I think it's one that people really do underestimate in PvP. The weapon itself requires 11 strength and 16 dexterity in order to wield, and it weighs 3 units. It is a somber weapon, so you are stuck with Horfrost Stomp as the skill, but I feel like that's not a bad thing. At plus 10, it does have a base damage of 271, it has a D scaling in strength and a B scaling in dexterity. Overall, I feel like this is a pretty decent weapon. There are some glaring cons to the weapon, but overall I feel like the pros outshine the cons to a significant degree, and I feel like the cons really are why a lot of people underestimate what this weapon can do. That said, let's get started with those cons. First and foremost, it's an axe, so it's not going to have the best reach, it's not going to have the best move set. It's a bit short as well, so with that, people are easily able to get out of your range, and that's one of the biggest challenges with using an axe. They really aren't great at chasing people down either, so that's another issue that this weapon does have, but pairing it up with another weapon can resolve that issue. In the focused PvP video I did, I paired this weapon up with the Frozen Needle, and that issue was completely invalidated. That said, other cons of the weapon, you are unable to change the Ash of War. It is somber, so that's pretty standard, but I don't think that that's really a bad thing. So that said, moving to the pros. The Ash of War. Hoarfrost Stomp is great. That wide cone that it puts out when you do the attack is phenomenal. It's got such a wide reach, it deals a little bit of chip damage to your opponent, and it builds up their frostbite. And that's really where this weapon shines, the frostbite. With that, it really helps keep pressure on your opponent. Or frost stomp can be used to zone your opponent, it keeps pressure on them, it builds up the status effect, and it has a really low cost, so you can kind of spam it, to be honest. That said, when your opponent is low on health because of that chip damage it does, you can use it to finish them off as they're running away. It's really kind of a great skill. That said, other pros of the weapon, the weapon itself does deal 65 frost buildup per hit, and that is super important because it keeps pressure on the opponent even when they're out of the range of the weapon itself. That's where it and Hoarfrost Stomp, the frost buildup from the weapon and Hoarfrost Stomp, they really go together, they're greater than the sum of their parts. If you had just one without the other, it wouldn't really be a decent weapon, but because you have both, that's great. That said, with the frost buildup, if you do actually have frostbite proc on an R1, then you can actually sneak a second R1 in and get a little more damage on your opponent that way. That said, the damage overall on the weapon is okay, it's decent at best. It's really not great in comparison to even other axe class weapons. So that's something to really keep in mind. You do need to play smart when you are using this weapon. You can't just run up to someone and spam away at them. It's not like you're using rivers of blood here. You need to play a little more strategically. You need to focus on building the frostbite buildup, and you need to focus on zoning your opponent when they are not in range. You need to really force them to play how you want them to play. So that's something to bear in mind. You need to be strategic. And that's not a bad thing, but I understand that it's not for everyone. I personally think it's a good thing and I like it a lot because it forces you to be mindful of what you're doing and in the long run that will help you be a better player. You can't just go absent mind absent absent-mindedly up to someone and just start spamming. It doesn't work like that. You have to really focus on what your opponent's doing, focus on the distance, focus on the range, play unlocked from time to time, and use Horfrost Stomp while unlocked 
to get them while an opponent is running around you, you know, strafing. Basically, you need to force them to go where you want them to be. And that's really not a bad thing. Because, like I said, when you take those lessons in mind and move to a different weapon that doesn't require you to play so strategically, it'll improve your overall ability. I think that's a good thing. I think there's a time and place for that. And I think that this weapon really is underestimated because when you can do those things, the weapon itself, it's pretty darn good. It can be somewhat devastating in the right instances. So when your opponent is, you know, not expecting it, I think this weapon really shines. But that's about all I've got for this weapon. It's a bit of a shorter one today because it's just pretty straightforward. There is one fight left after this one where I do something pretty stupid at the very end, but it does work out. So if you guys want to stick around and watch that, I think you'd probably enjoy it. That said, that's all I've got. So hope you've all enjoyed this video. Thank you for stopping by. Like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time.